Oh, hello, Sid. How are you, dear? <clears throat> Let me put my good mic on. <laughs> Mail 33 Estonia. Thank you for that. Thank you very much, Sid. I thought I'd just, uh, before I go to the gym, maybe have a short uh, chat. So I just spontaneously thought I will see who's who's around. Column is here. Is Hi, Mehran, 26-year-old from England. This has been doing okay, despite worrying about thoughts at the back of my head. <laughs> you know, if you if you read what you just wrote, worried about thoughts, which they don't have any actuality, you worried about something virtual behind your head. <laughs> just just think about it. How we are built to be afraid of our own shadows <laughs> or a suggestion. Uh, like the idea of somebody going to throw a stone at you, you already move. That's how we are living. Rather than <laughs> there's nothing recognizing that there's, it's just an idea, it's just a thought. Somebody says, I want to throw this rock at you. I <laughs> say, okay, well, I'll dodge when you throw it. <laughs> but we don't wait for that. We just, you know, become scaredy cat already. So focus on that. Annie says, hey, hey, Annie, hey yourself. <laughs> Give me the protocol. And in the Lugani says, Salam Mehran, Salam in the Lugani in 24 male London. And Sid says, I'm good. Things with the girls seem to be fine, good. But I'm very sad about the move. Well, naturally, I will miss Estonia and I will really miss. <laughs> Well, listen, uh, we all miss somebody. I mean, we all would like to have someone that is special at the present time or s some moment or a memory. But that's not always in the card, is it? <laughs> in the cards. So we endure, we become resilient, flexible, and we understand everything as a duration. Um, even a grape has a duration on the vine, and eventually it's no longer there. And there would be, the good news is that when the season over, no more grapes on the vine, next year there's a big possibility, if not a 100% possibility, there will be grape on the vine again. And this is how life is. Sometimes you go through a certain exercise or experience or relationship, and then its duration is shorter than we expected. However, that is the way of the river. That is the way of life. That is how nature works. We can't expect everything that is joyful and it's there temporary to uh, give us a certain kind of an energy and experience to become permanent. The idea of turning temporary to permanent, impermanent to permanent, is the reason for the suffering in most cases. So let's appreciate uh, the strawberry when it is in the season available and we enjoyed it as much as we could and then there is time for the strawberry season is over and we have to understand that that's the way of the nature that's the way of the river this is the way as mandalorian says <laughs> so let's move on to next uh, bigger and better things and appreciate the movement of life rather than trying to turn turn this journey of life which is about movement into static and hold on to it and not be able to actually learn from it by moving on if we are inside a turmoil or inside a situation we are focused on how to get out of the situation how to swim out of it how to swim through it how to deal with it how to enjoy it whatever it may be but we won't really learn it until we move from it away 
and then we have a little bit of distance between us and what it was, and then things become a little bit focused. It's no different than having some kind of, I don't know, whatever it is, you put your face into it, and you say, what is it? What is it? I can't tell. Well, you got to back off a little bit so you can focus, yeah, naturally. Then you can really see the details, why was there, why you experienced it, you know, what you learned from it, and so on. Otherwise, while you're so focused on trying to hold on to it, you won't really, you will miss the other things that you would have learned if you take a distance from it. And this is your chance. You enjoyed it. You had the strawberry. Now it's time to separate yourself from it and let yourself learn from what you learn and then use it for the next step in the journey. And that's how you deal with things that don't always remain as long as you want it to remain. Because nothing really will. So we better become good at that. Um, of course, of course, of course. You know the answer, right? You know the answer. But we always need assurance. That's why you ask it. Otherwise, intellectually, scientifically, in any way, shape, or form, you want to think about it philosophically, the answer is definitely yes. Yes, you will find someone else at some point. That's definite. You know, even I can find. <laughs> Let alone you young kids. <laughs> young men. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would probably be very um, <laughs> disappointed if when I was like 30 years old or so on, or 20 or 30 or even and somebody, some older person, even though the one that I would respect would say, you know, you kids. Of course, of course, uh, it depends on who says it and with what the energy it says. It. But um, uh, I mean, you young men, by all means. Um, and Dilgani says, Mehran, how do you become less interested in what other people think of you? That's when you become more interested in you <laughs> and what you do. Because <laughs> your focus is on affirmation and credit and attention of other people which is one of the um, kind of needs that we have been programmed to have but when your focus becomes on evaluating yourself by yourself what i have learned what i've accomplished what i'm here to do what i want to do and you elevate yourself through understanding the plans you have for your life positive plans for your life then you actually care less because then you would need to focus on who are these people that I actually hope uh, to see they think good of me? Who, who are they? What is their credentials? <laughs> why, why would it matter for me that this guy, who I can see so many flaws in his lifestyle and um, thinking and manners and morals, business practices or family gatherings or however he treats other people, why would it matter to me that what he or she thinks of me? Why shouldn't it matter to me what I actually think and set my own standards on my own. And if I find a flaw or something that is not up to my standards, I become aware of it and I modify it and I advance it, you know, elevate it, you know, to a better, uh, better level of, uh, you know, uh, standards. You be the judge of yourself. Nobody else can. And nobody else really is that qualified. Unless, let's say, you're learning piano from... Uh, Chopin or from Mozart and of course you will take their criticism or their guidance to heart and you use it to help yourself to become a better pianist that's a different story but layman this and that so forth what do I care just so because I feel good about myself because that guy said you're a good guy who the fuck is he that it should really matter but the bottom line is that you think of yourself less that's why you think other people are more not because the other people are actually have accomplished amazing things in life and then it's, they're so important to you and they're role models and what they say it really matters. No, because you don't think much of yourself. So you need to accomplish things you want to do. You want to be on the right path that you want to be and meet your standards and be proud of yourself by what you do, how you do, how you live in your life, what you accomplish in life. Then your outlook of yourself, your judgment about yourself will be in such a level that you really... <laughs> You don't need somebody else who is really not a specialist in anything to kind of grade you. 
to kind of affirm you, to feel good about yourself. You feel good about yourself because of the actuality of who you are, not just some kind of illusory echelon. Okay. So what? It's no, it's kind of no different when some people here, subscribers or viewers, uh, they mean well and they're kind and they call me Dr. Mehra. And as you can always see in the first thing I say before I answer the question is that I'm not a doctor. Please, let's don't make that uh, misunderstanding. I don't pretend to be one and I'm not a doctor. Why? Because I don't need that um, uh, complementary degree when I am not a medical professional. professional. I'm not a physician. So why would it make me feel any better? It doesn't. It actually makes me fake. So I don't want that. What I want is recognition of what I'm saying, not to give me a title. What would the title do? If I was, you're yeah, great. Okay. Put a PhD in front of my name, Dr. Dodd. Yeah, my father had a PhD in law and everybody called him Dr. Dodd. Okay, fair. But I don't. So when they give it to me, it doesn't make me feel any better or anything. I, in fact, it makes me feel worse. Like I'm not good enough. I have to be a doctor. What I say doesn't make sense. All I want him to recognize me by what I say. Define me by what I say, what I do. Not by something that they think it's kind to me. You know, it's a similar kind of thing. So people say good things about you, whether they say or not, shouldn't make any difference to you because your content, your actuality is what really makes you feel good or bad about yourself. And you can be the judge of that and only you. Um... Beetlejuice says, why do I feel like I've become a romantic throughout the years? The nice feelings I used to get and imagining myself with that person doesn't happen anymore. I've become numb to these feelings. Ah, you think you are. Just wait till the right girl shows up. You feel like a ton, ton of brick has hit you. So just be patient. You see, the thing is, you guys are impatient. You're constantly thinking, if it's not happening now, it will never happen. That's <laughs> it's, it's interesting. It's like if the caveman would say, well, if I don't, if I can't fly in an aircraft, uh, you know, 747 now, then that means it will never happen. But it happened, didn't it? It just meant it wasn't this high. So the judgment of that it will never happen because it hasn't happened is kind of silly. You will find the opportunities. You will find the business opportunities. You will find inventions you want to do. You will find the girls that you're looking for. You will find the relationships that you're looking for. It will all come when the time is right and you're in the right time and right place. But coming up with this kind of a premonition that, oh, I, I, I'm numb about it. It will not, well, because you're pissed off. You're, <laughs> you're reacting to the fact they haven't found a really nice girl who pays attention to you. And now you have a temper tantrum. Oh, I, 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 I'm numb. I don't have any. It's, it's, it's like a complaint. You want attention. Don't. Don't do that. Do your things. Accomplish yourself and make yourself a better version of you. And just keep on at it. And then you will eventually meet the right person. Out of the blue. Yeah, because it's not up to you. It happens whether you want it or not. It happens. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Now. Annie says, sometimes I feel so sad. I feel old. <laughs> okay, Annie, first of all, give me the protocol. You haven't even done that yet. Oh, you are. 23-year-old Pakistan, female. I have dreams about my ex-boyfriend, she says. I want to forget him. And as he left me and got engaged, but I really miss him 24-7. I don't want to, but I do. No, you don't miss him. You miss the idea of being engaged because that's such a big deal there that makes you feel like, oh, I'm a real woman. Somebody wants me. And that's what the society has 
train me and program me to expect and to do in order to be accepted as the decent and respectable woman. It's all the bullshit that they put in your head. So now you think that guy would have provided that. That was the vehicle. You may miss him because you had some, uh, you know, time, spend some time with him and you have some memories and all. That's natural. It's normal. It will go away by itself. Don't worry about it. But the idea that it was a vehicle to get you where the society expects you to be is because you're a sheep. You're complying to what the society expects you to do. And I didn't mean it in a derogatory way because most of us at one point or another behave like sheep. We forget about our own determination and leadership and we try to comply with what the society asks us. Look at what's happening today. They're going to have people who have done it and the people who haven't done it get at each other's throat. That's the plan. Divide and conquer. And then take away your liberties because of all these things that are distracting you from focusing on what the real thing is happening. So the same thing here. Society has programmed you in such a way to comply without really meaning anything about it. But you have somehow bought into it and you feel this the relationship having come to an end is an opportunity lost. Now, investment that I've done, all the people who knew about it and I was getting ready and all that so forth. How is it going to turn out? I got to go through that again with somebody else and be convinced. And you had convinced yourself that this guy is the right guy for you. But guess where that took you? You're wrong, right? You are wrong. Can you accept that? If you accept that you were wrong, then you will not protect what you have this, what you have thought about this guy. Because you are under the belief that what you thought about this guy was correct. So therefore now you're thinking about a missed opportunity, still thinking that was a right choice. But the facts are that it's proven to you that the guy was not the right choice. It was a wrong choice. So instead of focusing on the fortune that you have, that somebody up there liked you and severed this relationship because that was the wrong person, you're still sticking to the fact that but it seemed good. I felt good about it. So you're good about feeling and feeling good about it because of all the other things that we talked about and forgetting about the fact that in actuality it would be a hell, hell of a life because the guy probably didn't have enough morals to have done this, breaking up with you and engaging with somebody else like that. So what does that tell you? If you can't get that and you're still stuck on the guy, then you're a sheep. You need to recognize your leadership and use your mind and your power of mind, willpower, to pull you out of holes in life rather than sit there and say, why the hole doesn't go away and doesn't elevate me to the regular you know, street level? Well, because that's not a job. The, hole is the, the job of the hole is to suck you in, keep you there, and keep you unsuccessful. You're the one who's responsible to rise up and get out of the hole, no matter what situation that could be. So get that to your head and stop giving him credit and recognize that it was a mistake, even though it didn't look like it was a mistake, but it turned out the factuality of it is that it was a mistake. Focus on the factuality, the act, the actuality of it, not what you hoped all this time to be. And therefore that hope and what you hoped it to be doesn't let you to think what the actuality of it is. Focus on the actuality, discredit it, you know, disqualify it, move on. Next, keep yourself in shape, go exercise, you know, accomplish yourself. There'll be lots of guys lining up, you know, anywhere in the world, especially in Pakistan and neck of the woods like that, that, you know, um, finding a wife is a thing to do and everybody's running after women, you know, more so than it's available uh, you know, here, because here is so much, so much availability that not so easily people commit to marriage. But over there, it's not so available to freely be with girls and, you know, couples be together. So they are focused on creating that lifestyle by getting married to a girl rather than having a, you know, I don't know, relationship after relationship. Uh, I'm not saying which one is good or bad, but I'm saying that works to your advantage. Right, column. We are not our thoughts. 
because they are not our thoughts. Huh? They're the brain's thought. And brain is separate than you. It's a separate system. Brain, you, thoughts are separate things. Hmm? All right. You make thoughts using the apparatus of the brain. It's a different thought than what the brain uses its own apparatus and makes thoughts. So thoughts that show up that is not of your initiation, of not your choice, it's brain's thoughts. And brain doesn't know shit about you. It just spits out thoughts. And you're not supposed to be mixing it up as brain is you. You're the brain, so therefore thought is you and you're the thought. No, none. Irrelevant. Separate systems. Um, Peter Jew says, why do I feel like I have been... Okay, you, you, you check that out. Yeah, sure, Beetlejuice. Yeah, that's how HOCD, uh, you know, gets you depressed. You know, when it gets you depressed, naturally, you're not going to do anything. But you're not questioning yourself, why I don't feel like going play soccer. You're focusing on this, the romantic part thing, yeah? But it actually gets you depressed you don't want to do anything. That's when you have to kick yourself in the ass and get up and go do things, go do whatever it is that you always like to do, sports, girls, uh, so association, socializing, this and that, so forth, and then retrain your brain by your behavior. One says, hello, sir, do you think HOCD is more dangerous in young ages because they have not the sexual maturity as the adults hocd is not dangerous in any age it's just a malfunction of the brain that you need to educate yourself and understand what it is and therefore there is no danger to it it's just a behavior of the anxiety of the need for assurances it's a subset of OCD, and basically you have to understand what it is. It's not anything that can have any force to make you do anything. It's just nuisance, bothersome, um, you know, depending on what your gender is, and it's always attacks you the opposite of what you are, and it just bothers you. But learning about it, it is, there's no, no danger to it. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, so, where was that? Hmm. And so we have... But you so serious is, do you think I'm fat? I don't know. Ask your mom. Um, D.D. Barry says, welcome back. Welcome back, D.D. Good to see you here. John 5 says, uncomfortable arousal feeling. Well, you know, arousal is good. Doesn't matter what. It's your interpretation about the roots of it. You come to a conclusion. That's what bothers you. Otherwise, it's got lots to do with anxiety level and, you know, the 
comparing yourself to be the best and wanting the assurance and trying to fo focus too much or hope this is not for that, this is not for that. Then it becomes something that you start interpreting it. Just let go of all these conclusion interpretations and the cluster of thinking and category of thinking and just observe life and just don't interpret it. You'll be fine. No, otherwise nothing means anything. You know, you could have, you could be cold enough or you could be kind of a, a anxious about some kind of, or you could be fearful about the movie that you're watching and you could get a rosal. I mean, these are all uh, effects of anxiety and amygdala comes in and entertains and you, it, it tries to protect you. And that could be in the middle of anything, entertainments, uh, sporting activity, whatever it could just simply happen. But you're looking for conclusions roots what does it mean why because you're constantly trying to assure yourself what is most important to you which is being the gender that you are and that what is most important to, to you becomes the focal point of you protecting uh, um, a concept that you're really focused on and that makes you actually to constantly need assurances and creates all these intrusive thoughts in in a nutshell Marcella Amaral says, wow, I open here and I was thinking about it. There we go. Gee, and they say we are not magical channel. But you know, if we were magical channel, we would have 11,000 viewers, not 11. <laughs> we are incognito. We purposely make sure people don't find us. <laughs> I should put a prize. Whoever finds us gets, I don't know, brownie point. Um, guys, listen. One, uh, you haven't introduced yourself as far as the protocol is concerned. I need to know how old you are, what your gender is, where you're tuning in from. And if you're under the age of 18, I want to make sure you have permission from your parents to be here or guardians because um, this channel is uh, just speaking about different topics that are uh, mature topics. And uh, I just want to make sure that we comply by the rules. And uh, I want you to have um, one of your parents with you or assurances that um, you have permission from them. So, because I can't really know who is who, but at least let me know that information. Annie says, please reply me. Did you receive my message? Any, I did reply to you, didn't I? Yeah, your last message was here and I did reply. Maybe you were making tea and you missed it. No, I didn't, Annie. Oh, in what age do you think humans get their sexual orientation and what do you think is the most severe case of HOCD. What are you asking this? I mean, you're born with your sexual orientation. It's not that you're going to develop into it. I mean, the first uh, contact between uh, when your mom and dad were trying to procreate, a spark, spark, as a result of the joining the sperm and the in the ovum with the ovary there's a spark of electrical spark electricity that's where the heart starts beating the first thing was there any thoughts involved in the heart being born no thought wasn't still involved brain wasn't made to be having any involvement in production of the heart what kind of heart and then the other stuff including genitalia your inclination, gender, everything is created, but there's no ability to thinking yet at all. So when thoughts have had nothing to do with the with how you're put together and what your gender and uh, everything else about your inclination is, how could it later on in life have anything to do with actually changing you because thoughts show up? Thoughts didn't have anything to do with putting you together. How could they have anything to do with modifying you? 
So you are put together in the wombs of your mom, according to what the universe has decided, according to what your genes directions are. And that's it. You're born. However you're born, that's how you're going to be the rest of your life. As I said many times, you're not cow's milk. That you're milk today and you leave, leave it outside due to the weather or temperature, it turns into sour milk. And a few days later, maybe you'll have yogurt. And eventually, long time after, possibly you'll have cheese. It's not like that that you keep changing. You may be thinking about some intrusive thoughts opposite of whatever your gender is. If you're born homosexual, you'll be homosexual forever. If you're born heterosexual, you'll be heterosexual forever. All the rest of it, the thoughts that show up and all that is just distracting you. And these are having psychological roots, such as what Dr. Schwartz in his brain lock book has explained. Dr. Philipson, Dr. Jan Weiner, Dr. Owens, Dr. Leibert, Dr. Sperry, Dr. Fe Penfield, they all through their researches have shown that you're beyond the brain. Brain is not you. You're not the brain. And there are aspects of you and the mind that the brain cannot even reach. Watch the program, watch the video that I've created on the basis of those um, experiments of the doctors that I mentioned. And also watch the presentation of the, uh, the uh, OCD experts such as Dr. Schwartz in regards to neuroscience of habits, in regards to what, how OCD takes place and it starts working, how to deal with it. And the videos of Dr. Philipson that helps you to understand HOCD and you know, uh, sexual orientation OCD and helps you to be educated. Dr. Jan Weiner, you got to understand that these are things to do with amygdala, anxiety, caudate nucleus in the striatum, malfunctioning the signaling system, malfunction of the protocol and the exchange of information back and forth between uh, prefrontal cortex and the um, caudate nucleus. And all these malfunctions and all the other reasons and psychological reasons causes you all these turmoil. But when you learn what they are and educate yourself and learn how to rewire your brain through your behavior toward these thoughts rather than being affected and believing them, and then through neuroplasticity, the brain will rewire itself and you will know why it's been happening. And it's not that your gender is changing, it's because these are the things that human being goes through regardless of what your gender is. All genders go through that. You know, they could possibly go through that, they have a intrusive thoughts and have HOCD and all that so forth. So by learning about it, you will become someone who knows what's happening in his own psyche, in his own body. And then it's not bamboozled by the effects of the brain on the body. And the brain thinks something and then believes it because brain itself is in a virtual world. Brain doesn't understand anything different between virtual and actual. Virtuality and actuality to the brain makes no difference. That's why what it thinks, it believes. And when it believes, it believes its actuality it has no difference with him. And then it makes, based on that, makes the body react to it. No different than when you are in front of your friend and you have a baseball and you do this and the friend moves away. But you haven't thrown it. And even if you don't have a ball in your hand and you just do this, the protective system of the, your friend will make him move. Because the brain believes that this is an act of danger and wants to protect you, so makes your body react accordingly hmm? because it has believed it. So the idea is that the brain has believed, but you don't have to believe what the brain believes because you're not the brain. Brain is not you. You separate the thoughts that the brain makes from the thoughts that you make. You separate the thoughts that the brain makes from you. Therefore, you know that what the brain believed, you don't have to believe. So it, this separation shows you, you're not the brain, brain is not you. You're not thoughts and thought is not you. And so later on, eventually, by your behavior toward these thoughts, these thoughts decline in production because the brain says, well, look, I'm trying to get a rise out of him. I'm trying to get a reaction from him. I'm trying to get him to debate with me rise and try to fight with me about it so this energy exchange makes me feel i'm occupied i'm busy and i brain mind find my security in occupation in busyness in exchange in fights in arguments not like the body finds its security which is just 
being relaxed and knowing how everything, where everything is. In my apartment, the apartment is locked in a good part of town. And the physicality brings security to my physical portion of my entity. But physicality and physical environment does not bring that security that the brain, the mind is seeking because the mind finds its security through order of things. And order of things means occupation for the brain, doing things. And this doing things are often, especially when you have OCD, is about debating and attacking you. So get a rise out of you. You start protecting it. And this creates a busyness in the mind in the brain, occupation, and it feels secure. It feels I have a place to be. It's not like a gypsy anywhere because it has no place. Like everything else in your body has a place to be. Your, you know, your fingers are here, thumb is here, your wrist is here, elbow is here, shoulder is here, nose, ears. Everything has a place in your body. So they're settled. Mind doesn't have a place. It's always everywhere. Thinking about something finds its security in thoughts. That's the place for it to reside and feel that it's got a place to be otherwise it's always scattered that's why we're so unfocused often and we got to learn how to focus hmm? until you learn how to bring mind in the body as well which is through meditation the other videos that i've produced that it tells you where the mind and body both should be coordinated where you can manifest your total power in fact in the intro of my videos or outro of my videos i show a a, a 59 seconds glimpse of a a seminar I did in the local university shows the power of mind, you know, that shows you how powerful the mind is. And, and, and in, through that, I'm actually not explaining it there, but the explanation would be that happens, what you see in that little bit outro, when the student tries to lift me up, that happens actually when the mind finds a place in the body and therefore instead of being all over the place and trying to find a place of hanging his hat in a thought, in a topic, it finds a way to be coordinated with the body where the body is. When mind and body are coordinated, then you can't be lifted. That's what you see in that thing. It's against the law of physics. But that's how powerful the brain is. And when the brain is as powerful as it is, believes in something and makes the body react, that reaction to, the, to what the brain thought or believed that reaction, that bodily reaction becomes an evidence for you that, oh, then this, what the brain suggested, HOCD, whatever, OCD, whatever it, subsidy may be, must be true. Now what do I do? I'm changing. No, no. You have to educate yourself on this. Then you will know what this is. And then brain sees you're not, you're not entertaining this. You see what it is. You call it for what it is. As Dr. Schwartz has explained. And you... Focus on what it is you want to accomplish on that day. You go about your business, you ignore it, and then eventually it learns that it needs to subside, not keep producing these kind of thoughts because it's not in line with your values and you don't entertain them. And then eventually, called it nucleus, is glitched back into its normal position and does what it's programmed to do for according to your agenda. And then if it happened again, you now know what it is and you won't panic because you have the education. And eventually gets less and less and less. And whenever it happens, you actually are quite clear what glitch that is. And it won't bother you as much because you are now wise to it. You become the mechanic of your own machine. And that's the whole purpose of educating yourself through these psychological studies and neuroscience scientists and researchers and so on. And I've provided all the links under the HOCD videos that I provide on this channel for you. Anyhow, to educate yourself. All right. Okay, so with that. So what do we have here?
Yeah, yeah. In the Lugani, that is what we all do. We try to go into our memory and try to modify something which doesn't exist. That thing is dead. Regardless of what you do, it doesn't harm you at all. It's just a memory, but you want to fix it because you didn't handle it well at the time, possibly. And so you want to go back in there and check it out. And um, John 5 says, okay, I've got that. John 5 says, the cycle continues after I keep checking because it feels real and then I prove it wrong. Then it's on repeat. Yeah, that's why you should ignore. Dr. Schwartz explains the four steps that you need to do for to get rid of or help yourself to retrain, rewire the brain and uh, the steps that you, you need to know to do with OCD. And the Dr. Philipson's um, videos show you what this whole thing is. And of course, in many of my videos, I go into detail about many aspects of why and how you can deal with this. And so then you can you can be informed and educate yourself through all these videos. Um, Jay Gonza says, would love to talk about DV. What is DV? I don't know what that is. Uh, so anyhow, guys, you're always welcome to go on my site, mindthatseekstruth.com mind that seeks truth.com and uh, make an appointment uh, for skype consultation and we can chat what's concerning you one-on-one -on, -one on skype if you're a new client and make a one hour appointment then i'll add another appointment we'll have two hours on that particular session so we'll have ample time to discuss what's concerning you one-on-one -on, -one on skype Aha, Inez here says, I found you. Hola, hola, como esta, eh? <laughs> All right, and then we have... Mm -hmm. Jay Guns Gonza says, Mail 42 Los Angeles. Hello, Jay. Thank you for being here. And... Uh, NJ says, female, 30, how not to be available to a person that they take me for granted? Who do you think is responsible to be available? Now, it, it's time to respect yourself and take some responsibility for the opportunities that you give to the people who don't deserve to have that opportunity. Why? Because obviously you're a people pleaser and you're not so sure about yourself. You think of yourself not high enough. So therefore, you want to be accommodating everybody so they think, oh, he's a, she's a nice person. Why? Why do you need people say she's a nice person while you're available to someone that who you don't think is qualified, deserving to for you to be available to? Have a little respect for yourself because there is no um, secret to it and there is no magic needed for you not to be available for someone. Just don't be. Just say, I'm sorry, I'm not available. I'm busy. I just you know, have other plans. Oh, no, I can't do it then. I don't know when I can do it. I'll let you know. Stuff like that. You're too shy. You're too kind. Sometimes, you know, I've always been too kind too. But sometimes being too kind may actually mean you're being selfish. You want attention. So you're actually overly accommodating people. Like you're bribing them to consider you good instead of you just rising above the shit and be good through your learning and education and accomplishments and determination and plans that you have and just be good rather than want to look like good or have some people consider you good so for that reason you can manage doing things so you'll have that kind of a support around you that they consider me because oh, i feel good oh they so and so think oh i should i should be available to them otherwise they may not think of me good so you're actually uh, taking yourself hostage you know, you're bullying yourself. That if I want to be getting benefits from their attentions, I should be available to them. So where does that end? Before you know it, you actually allow them to hold your hands or, you know, rub you in a certain way or maybe kiss you. Or maybe uh, before you know it, you, you're doing things that you bloody hell never expected. Why? Because you are having a need. You have a need 
to be accepted, to be paid attention, to be evaluated, to be validated, to be confirmed, to be affirmed, to be identified with some kind of an image you've created of yourself in your own mind and you are paying for it and bribing them, allowing them and putting up with shit in order to have that continue. Wean yourself from the need. Fuck the need. You're great. You don't need some asshole's confirmation or affirmation. Who the hell are they? Who died and left them in charge to give you that affirmation? Who affirms them? Have you thought about it? They're affirmed by you actually accommodating them. Hmm? Stop affirming them and stop needing to be affirmed by having to be available to them so that you can get their kind of, a, you know, kudos. The whole world is going around a bunch of make me feel good. Just say, I don't need the fucking thing to feel good by you. I can feel good by myself. I do stuff right according to my standards. I justify things according to nobility or things that are seems reasonable, logical. I don't need anybody to affirm me if I'm actually affirmed by my own standards. And I try to keep those standards as high as I can. Simple as that. All right. All right. Uh, number one says 15 from Germany. We get it. It's good. Just uh, make sure that uh, your parents are aware that you're here, that uh, I don't want to step on any toes and so on. Um, Mr. Bibi says, hi, sir. Long time no see. Uh, Timo, 31 Greece. Hello, Timo. Says, questions. How you deal with jealousy from other people? I don't have to deal with it. It's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> if, you if they think highly of me and they're jealous, <laughs> well, it's their problem. I'm having okay. I'm okay. <laughs> Same thing. If they're jealous about you, why do you need to kind of convince them that, no, I'm like you. No, maybe you're better <laughs> in many things. Maybe you're a better mathematician. Maybe you're a better runner. Maybe you're a better, I don't know, uh, uh, boxer or tennis player. Maybe you're better looking. Maybe, you know, I don't know, whatever it is. You don't have to worry about that. They're jealous. They're jealous. They can go die. <laughs> because that's the path they're on. You know, you become jealous about it. There's no end to it. And eventually you'll kill yourself to death by constantly, uh, you know, worrying about, you know, uh, you know, somebody's better than me. Somebody's got more money. Somebody's got more girls. Somebody's got, uh, you know, more opportunities. No. That's, that's the, you know, that's the way to oblivion. So it's not your problem. Charlie McCarthy Noonan says, what are your thoughts on growing all response? I have a video on that and I will put the link here so you can uh, enjoy that because it's a long video and it's very elaborate. 
and uh, basically it's the best way to respond to your uh, concern uh, if you go on my channel and you can do that yourself and just put in uh, groinal and then you click on search it will give you a video which is uh, 23 minutes and 46 seconds and it is put right here and that will explain to you and put you in touch with the education and the articles that was written by uh, some experts and there you go john five says my comment was removed really where is it was it removed who removed it nobody can remove it i didn't remove it i didn't even read it so is it the repeat of it? it says if i get a rosal feeling around men anxiety then i do a check to see why and then i test a scenario in my head but I'm disgusted by it and it doesn't suit me, but test, but I test with woman and fine. Listen, this whole business of testing and all that is because the brain is asking you to test, but you're not the brain. Brain is not, you don't have to do what the brain says. Brain is not your master. Brain wasn't even there 40,000 years ago, but you were there for millions of years before you got to have this brain. Before 40,000 years ago, we lived for millions of years instinctively, like animals. We ran, we hunt, we cooked, <laughs> good, good. We, we had sex, uh, we slept. Uh, uh, everything was clear. There was no ambiguity. Everything was hardwired, and there was no thought to interfere about any kind of an idea, suggestion, other than how you've been put together. But since 40,000 years ago, we got this brain, which is no longer reptilian brain. It's not a stem brain. It's a full-on uh, brain with lots of power and capabilities and also lots of possibility for glitches and bullshit. But nevertheless, it's a tool. But somehow, since childhood, we've been uh, we've been um, um, programmed to think that the brain is us. And brain is intellect. That we follow what the brain is. Brain is our leader. It's bullshit. Brain is an organ, like your intestine. It takes food and, you know, turns into energy and the rest, it shuts it out. Brain also gets stuff and neurons and creates things, pops out thoughts. And many of the thoughts are like the feces and they're supposed to be thrown out and it throws out. But what it throws out, you don't judge it. You don't think, oh, because it says created, it must mean something. I now I got to find out what it means. No, it's no different than intestine. It's just getting rid of all this shit. It's supposed to make 80, 90,000 thoughts a day. It does. But none of them are irrelevant. Most of them are irrelevant to you. Only the ones that you use the apparatus of the brain to make certain thoughts for your purposes, to learn something, calculate something, figure out something, design something, produce something, educate yourself something. That's your thoughts. But the brain itself uses the apparatus of the brain to make thoughts itself. And those thoughts are irrelevant to you. But you don't qualify them. You just take them. Oh, they're here. That must mean something. Why? Because the brain has. Who the fuck is brain? Brain is part of the apparatuses that you have in order to use it, use these tools, the like kidneys, liver, intestine, this and that. But somehow you bought into the fact that, no, I am following the brain. The brain is my master. What the fuck? You're nuts? So if you look at all these data and all the information, you will see that you don't need to check anything. You don't need to prove anything. You can actually get arousal by looking at the a table set for two in a restaurant and nobody's there. Just very nice roses and so on. It just gives you that kind of a anxiety. Oh, I'm missing a girlfriend. There is no girl for me. Or, or you may see, oh, wow, how romantic it would be. Or any imagination. You could be having a, I don't know, hard on for a doorknob because it's shiny and shiny is glitters association to jewelry, jewelry on the neck of a woman. All the association happens in a nanosecond in the brain. It's very powerful. And the association to concept of sex, it could be seeing a naked body of a man. It's not that you got an arousal for the man. It's because the naked body of the man reminds you, associates the brain, associates it with sex. Why? Because if you want to have sex, you got to be naked. 
So you see a naked body of the man associated with sex, sex with God, sex with the kind of sex that you understand, sex with the woman, and that whole connotation takes you to concept of sex and you react to that concept. But then you say, oh, then that means I have a homosexual uh, interest in that man. No, that was just simply a beginning of an association to the concept of sex, which your brain does. You don't do any of that. And you could see the hindquarter of a horse and you say, wow, shiny, nice, round. And you could have an arosa, but that doesn't mean you're a horsosexual now. Or you could see a tree, soft, beautiful flower, a rose, oh, so soft. And you can touch it, and that touch could actually make you feel something because the association of almost everything goes to sex. That's how we are born. We are sexual creatures. Anything with sexual relevance can cause that. That could be anything, luxury, a nice handbag, a, I don't know, beautiful Persian rug. You have association of, oh, what if I had this and my date would be here, such a beautiful luxury rug, and she's with, you know, you know, dude up this way and cl her clothes that way. And all the association takes place without even you knowing it. And then the brain believes it because it sees it and then makes the body react in a certain way. And you associate the reaction or the arousal to the trigger rather than to the association that this trigger, this topic, brought it. It could be a woman's body. It could be a new car, a sports car. It could be a man's body. It could be a whatever. It creates an anxiety and it makes you feel like, oh, I'm comparing myself. Maybe he's got better muscles than I do. So that makes me envy. That makes me like he's taking the chances of me with girls away because he's got better muscles. And all these anxiety and so on makes you certain kind of a, um, a certain kind of a um, envy or certain kind of a uh, um, feeling of uh, um, inferiority and respect because we men respect power but that's why we want to be powerful have good bodies and fit bodies so when we see somebody perhaps has a good fit body it creates a certain kind of respect that certain kind of respect makes us feel a little bit inferior because the opportunities could be going towards him rather than us because we want to have the opportunities with women. And then that whole thing brings about a certain kind of feeling, uh, respect and inferiority. And that could make you uh, feel that, oh, that means I feel he's better than me and I'm kind of uh, respectful or uh, taking, you know, stepping back from my alpha maleness and considering him to be a better male than I am. And then that uh, ends up possibly making you feel like, oh, that's an inclination. This respect, this respect is an inclination of interest in that man. It's all association that takes place in your brain. And you, you've, got, you've got nothing to do with it. And you shouldn't even try to make any interpretation or any meaning of this at all, once, one way or another. It's a rabbit hole. Just understand that the brain can malfunction. And these are the glitches of the signaling system of the brain. It's OCD and OCD subsets. And watch the programs that Dr. Schwartz, Dr. Philipson, Dr. Jan Rayner, and other scientists, neuroscientists, and OCD experts have, and learn and educate yourself about it. So you get a rose or you get a rose. Or. Don't interpret it. Observe and go. The problem with us in this life is that we don't observe life. We have con we looking for a conclusion. Oh, a rose. Or, the conclusion is ah. Arousal for, uh, it happened that when I looked at that horse, the conclusion is that um, I, I like sex with animals. What? Why do you go for conclusions? That's a problem. The brain of our brain today is stuck from normal function because of words and meanings of words and the fact that the words categorize things and doesn't allow you to go beyond the category and you just understand and analyze things based on the category that they are introduced to you. Conclusions. For example, a scientist out of um, Stanford University in one of his lectures proved and showed that if you show someone a triangle, a square, a rectangular, and a shape that is all kinds of edges and so on and is not known, and then you ask someone later on, say, can you describe the shapes? They quickly, easily can say triangle, rectangular and uh, square. They don't remember the other one. Why? Because that one doesn't have a category. It's never been given a category. It's unknown to them. Hmm? So we judge things by category. So when you get an arousal, you put it, you got to put it in a category to understand it. That's the problem. The brain is lost today 
because of the categories, because of the conclusions, and because of because of perceptions, rather than just observing it for it. I saw a tree, that's it, that's a tree, great, go, let's go. Now, tree, oh, big tree, short tree, uh, lots of branches, not, oh, it looks like the tree I saw last year, so, so. no longer you're actually observing the tree, you're judging the tree, you are uh, analyzing the tree, you're perceiving the tree, so you're categorizing tree, the tree, so you really don't know what you saw. You saw a, a, a something that was described by a certain word and certain characteristics. No longer you saw what that thing was because it took over your brain, the word, the categorization of that thing, and no longer it was just an observation. I saw an ocean. Oh, it was Pacific Ocean or Atlantic Ocean. Who gives a fuck? I saw a bunch of water. And, sh and you know ships in it and so on that's it but now words and categories where the ships are coming what kind of flags are all takes you away and takes you to somewhere that it wasn't the intention of that observation so turn your life into observing and living rather than conclusions categories and then i gotta now go and find out what's the reason of that such a conclusion coming to my mind there's no reason that's how the brain works because thoughts are all one when you go when you see something give it a word and it associates with one thoughts or one word or one category there are other categories and words and thoughts that are all one in one scoop of pool of thoughts they all come out and suddenly they associate millions of tangents and you see you become aware of all of them and then you try to wonder why am i remembering this why am i seeing this why this thought is there it's not because it just went in to pick up one and the rest of the shit came up with it because there is only one thoughts Thoughts are not individual. Hmm? The brain, that's how it goes into lots of things come up. And then you think, oh, that, because I thought of that, that means that so there's an association between I look at this man and that kind of thought. No, you go in there, it associates with every fucking thing that is out there. You're not supposed to find out or try to find out what it means. It means nothing. Just that's how it works. You're supposed to be the judge and ignore the things you don't want to ignore and go on about your business. Why? Because we live by our vetoes and choices. You veto what you don't like, you choose what you do, and the rest of it is irrelevant to you. That's how you live. Observe and go. All right, next. God damn it. Oh, with the content that we have, I mean, honestly, 23,000 subscribers, honestly, 12 people. <laughs> so you can see I need help. You guys uh, promote the channel. I don't know what's going on with YouTube. Um, I don't know. They they somehow we're incognito. Okay. Same thing, Charlie. Performance anxiety and all that, all because you're distracted. Your performance hasn't gone anywhere. It's there. It's there as it's always been. But just like when you're running a race in a track and you keep looking at, you know, how far the other person is from you, how far the other person is from you, as long as you're distracted trying to figure out what that means, what that movement of that person is, how far, how fast, it, then you won't be doing your best, what you're about, what you're capable of doing. Because you've distracted yourself. Otherwise, your ability to run is still there with you, but you're just not focusing on your ability you're focusing on other things that is being intrusive so idea is to learn how to focus on what it is that you want to set out and accomplish on that day whatever it may be in any kind of a tangent in life and you will have better results always always and uh, also you know uh, just go through it doesn't matter doesn't matter what comes to your mind you just focus on what you like and you enjoy you know the 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 time you have with your girlfriend and then you know see how it goes and you get better and better because you're no longer panicking about it this whole anxiety and panicking is what stops you from actually performing the way you do otherwise nothing is changing you Amon says hey Mehran see Paul McCartney's new video he launched oh I would Paul McCartney is from my era I'll look at it. Ines says, good night, all good night. Gustavo says, sir, 
what happens when I look uh, someone and thoughts pop up can you feel out of control how to regain okay I explained that in other videos please check them out Gustavo because I can't go through them now um, goodwill forgives his male 33 Texas hello God will forgive okay um, is it the man's is this the man's duty to propose to his woman I have been with this with my 17 year old girlfriend what the fuck you're doing with the 17 year old girlfriend anyhow you're 33 years old she's not a full-grown woman to know what she's doing she's impressed by an older man uh, and you obviously you're infatuated with her because you know she looks you know I don't know however she looks but it's you know female beautiful and all that but you have to make the better judgment here you're the older one uh, you wait at least a year or two uh, for her to be able to make great decision and become of legal age or at least at least you should go and see her parents and inform them of uh, their daughter's interest in you and your interest in uh, in in their daughter and discuss it with them if it's permitted if they allow it would they would they would they agree with this and if it's okay with them so they could be the counsel to the girl and the girl would have had enough chance to to evaluate this the age difference and so on and at the same time uh, somebody older uh, would be able to help her to make a decision and that would be her parents but being with a 17 year old is a no-no in my book so you make your own decisions and i'm sure if you make if you think it through imagine if you have a 17 year old girl and a 33 year old guy uh, a good guy i'm not talking about uh, you not being good at all but 33 year old guy comes along uh, what would you think what would you tell your 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 daughter and what would you tell that gentleman so be fair and do what is right and says uh, it's, it's your old girlfriend for nearly five years nearly five years what the hell are you talking about you were 27 and she was 12 i don't get it uh, i think you you're just pulling my leg and uh, and now i'm unsure who should propose the first near her uh, i think you need to talk to someone uh, maybe at your I don't know church or somewhere to get guidance because I think you're either pulling my leg or you're full of shit or you're just uh, you know talking nonsense. So, so if that's either one of the cases, well, we just move on to next because that's just the unreasonable and uh, obvious question. All right, guys, it's time for me to hit the gym and um, hope that you guys had as much fun as I had here in most cases. And uh, I look forward to talk to you again uh, in the meantime. Be good to yourself to the others. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.